Hello everyone and welcome to our backyard. Today's video I want to show you the aftermath of the hurricane, hurricane barrel on our yard south of Houston. My name is Crystal and I garden along the Texas Gulf Coast in zone 9 and we were gone visiting family and a week later Hurricane Beryl hit this area and we were not home and so we did not have a chance to prep our yard at all and unfortunately some things suffered because of that and so I'm gonna go around and just share with you some of the things I have found. And first I'm gonna be positive and show you the things I'm really happy and pleased with. And first I'd love to go over to my vines. One of the things I've shared with you is we use these, these cattle stakes. I don't know what else to call them, but they are used in fencing and they're very strong and we have them into the ground pretty far and we stake our trellises on them. And all of our trellises came out in fantastic condition. Our vines did too. I'm so pleased <laughs> with the Cardinal Climber, Oops, and then of course our passion vine. And I have seen golf fritillaries. I'm so tickled to see that we've got quite a few of the purple passion flowers flowering. So I'm real thankful to see these vines looking beautiful and healthy. Right next to them I've got the cardinal climber vines which are also doing very well. It seems the coral honeysuckle vines got whipped around quite a bit. I can see they've fallen forward but the trellises are still looking real good. The vines definitely show that they, especially all this is the back side of the vines, and so they're not dead. They've just been brought down. Oh boy. Whew. Okay. So, my vines I've been really happy with. Let me go through some of the things that are, a, are disappointing. My tree bed got ripped or flung around quite strongly, it appears, and so I've got holes. My salvia has been stripped or denuded, if you will. Um, some of the branches are falling down, but a lot of wind damage all throughout and along here and so um, I was really kind of surprised to see the amount of damage in here but I think the winds you know they weren't protected along and through here and so there's just a lot of a lot of damage so that was one surprise. Because I didn't know the hurricane was coming, we were gone a week before we even knew about the hurricane. At the time we left, it was going to be making landfall south of Brownsville into Mexico. Well, that wasn't the case. It actually came up to the Houston area and we were on the dirty side. So I was not able to secure my bird feeders. 
And I'm surprised that two are actually intact or fairly intact. And this one got, um, got blown over. There was significant rust though, which was surprising. And I'm, you know, very sure that that's what caused this to be blown over. And thinking about it, you know, what is different with this one? Because they are rated, certainly not for hurricane strength winds, <laughs> but two of them did survive a hurricane strength wind of up to over 90 miles an hour. But I had um, a bird feeder on top. And I think what that did is that allowed water to get in and actually rust it. And so I think that was the problem here. Because in my other feeders, I just have the filials at top and that prevents water from getting into the steel pole. So I think possibly that is what caused my bird feeder, the one bird feeder to, to fail. We have significant tree damage in the front yard, but we also have tree branches down and of course dead branches up in the tree. And our tree looks really battered. This one does anyway. So what we've noticed in our, in our subdivision and actually in our town is there's a lot of tree damage. Still a week later, almost a week later after the storm, we noticed there are shingles off roofs and we've noticed fencing is down. Pretty much in our yard, it's just tree damage and then plant damage. We don't have any fencing down, so that's a, that's a positive. Most of my plants I see have been really whipped and they're leaning. Here I've got my red hibiscus that is leaning over. I have an aloe vera plant that's toppled over. Lots of, lots of branches down. If I look at my new garden bed, I fully expected these tithonia to come down and they have, they, they do not survive even, you know, small winds. So that's unfortunate, but I can also see the direction of the wind. So the wind I thought came from the south, but here they're moving towards the west. And so, you know, it could have just been at the point where, where the eye wall was in what direction the wind was coming in the back here. So this bed looks <laughs> really battered and I've got a lot of cleanup to do. And then of course over in my shade bed, oh, that almost brought a tear to my eye. Sorry for the noises, but there's just a lot going on as we're my neighbors and we are doing cleanup. But oh my goodness, my shade bed is leveled and lots of lots of work. I felt really bad. This was so pretty <laughs> before I left. And you know, that's the way it goes. Plants are resilient and I know that, but I just hated to see all the damage, every, what's blown over, um, you know, what's, uh, it's just, <laughs> it's just a bummer seeing your, your hard work when it's leveled like this. 
One of the things that was really fascinating is all of my ground cover is gone again. And I've seen a lot of caterpillars. So life does continue. <laughs> and I've had a lot of um, pipevine swallowtail caterpillars, which absolutely makes my heart sing. And my fennel just got decimated. But oh my goodness, look, I have eastern black swallowtail caterpillars. And look at this, multiple chrysalises. I even have a chrysalis down there. And look at all those caterpillars. I'm just shocked. So some, a lot of the foliage got um, denuded. I don't know the correct term for it. When the foliage gets peeled off. And so a lot of the foliage has gotten peeled off of these plants. Oh, I've got a... But there are so many caterpillars. I'm shocked the birds haven't come and eaten them. I'm just stunned with how many caterpillars there are that survived this awful Category 1 hurricane. So... lots and lots of, of damage. Sometimes just looking at it makes me think, oh my goodness, that's full of water. This is almost <laughs> insurmountable. But I'm going to just take it, you know, one step at a time and just start the cleanup process like everyone else. You know, life is pretty resilient. So thanks for joining me as I just did a quick look around the yard. And look to see what happened, what fared okay, what didn't. My birds are in my yard eating on the little bits that are left. I need to, I need to feed them. I did create a video before I left that I will publish after this one. That video was about what I did to prep for when I'm gone <laughs> and certainly didn't expect a hurricane. But what I did to prevent, um, you know, prep. And then also one of the hand watering hoses that I absolutely love and the pros and cons of having a retractable hose. So, or one that, that grows in and contracts. So I will publish that video after this one, but I did want to share that our house is okay. We're okay. Our neighbors are okay. There's certainly damage, but don't have any home damage, don't have any roof damage. And very thankful that I have just tree and plant damage from this hurricane. We finally did get electricity and there's still almost a half a million people in the greater Houston area that still do not have electricity. And this is Sunday. Uh, let's see, for July 16th, no, 12th, 13th, 14th, July 14th. That's really tough because it's been hot and humid and it's been miserable. So I hope and pray that they get electricity restored to the area soon and 
cleanup continues and our gardens fill out and thrive again. So I hope you all have a wonderful day today. Thank you for joining me. And I hope to see you again soon.